A goalkeeper must be able to play the ball with his weaker foot. This drill conditions two-sided coordination. Each ball must be good. In this way, volleying can be practiced outside of the penalty area. From the center line, the goalkeepers can practice kicking accurately over a long distance. The first goal forces the goalkeeper to play the ball high enough. The second goalkeeper plays an active role in this drill. The goalkeeper at the end of the pitch tries to play the ball in a given direction with his first touch. The goalkeeper in the middle of the pitch stays poised on the front of his feet so that he can get behind the ball faster. The ball should always be played diagonally forward with the first touch. Each ball must be played with the first touch, as often as possible with the left foot and the right. The goalkeeper in the middle decides where he will play the ball. The two other players must then react. Each goalkeeper now follows in the path of the ball after kicking it.
The fast tempo of this drill makes it very strenuous. In this drill, the goalkeepers have a lot of ball contacts in a short time, but can also actively recuperate so that they are soon ready for more strenuous work. The goalkeeper must kick every ball he receives with the same foot. Playing the ball directly can also be included in shooting practice. When a second goalkeeper is present, the ball can be played further to the side. After the coach plays the ball, he changes position. <laughs> This drill shows a clear progression, inside of the foot, in step, half volley. The coach must throw the ball in an even rhythm and at the same height. Part four of advanced goalkeeping, high balls. The coach functions as a passive opponent. When an opponent is near, the goalkeeper must call for the ball. Lush. Lush. 
The goalkeeper must use his right fist to punch a high ball coming from his right. The goal ensures that he does not punch the ball too low. Turning the ball over the bar with a hand that is furthest away from the ball is being practiced here. Make sure there are not more than six repetitions. A cross step allows the goalkeeper to always start off on the foot that is nearest to the goal line. The cones and the opposing players are present to distract the goalkeeper as he intercepts the cross. The second goal has the same function. When a goalkeeper lets in a goal, he must be given another chance. The cone marks where the goalkeeper should stand before the cross is played. The two rods are excellent aids for practicing the difficult crossover. Every coach knows that practicing taking off from either foot is important. A small variation makes a technique drill into a conditioning drill. Hey, 
After catching the high ball, the goalkeeper can try to score with a throw. A goalkeeper must not be frightened to come off his line. The player who catches the ball scores a point. After the goalkeeper intercepts the cross, he can try to score in his opponent's goal. Part 5, Advanced Goalkeeping, drills with a running start. The cone ensures that the goalkeeper moves into the line of the ball. A goalkeeper must always be ready to deal with a shot from a rebound. This is a classic goalkeeping drill. The goalkeeper must be given enough time to get back to the other side of the goal. This seemingly simple drill is very strenuous. The ball must always be played at the goalkeeper's body. Each ball must be handled correctly before the next ball is played. When a goalkeeper goes down at an attacker's feet, he must make himself as small as possible. <laughs> 